Yeah, this is in Chicago. Uh, it's a Hoin and Diwan. And uh, most of the Indian Pakistani uh, live here in this part of the city. Stop the drone attacks on Pakistan! Stop the drone attacks on Pakistan! Stop the drone attacks on Pakistan! My name is Andy Fair. I'm with the Midwest Anti War Mobilization. Welcome to today's rally on, unfortunately, yet another disgusting anniversary for the United States, the ninth anniversary of the U.S. war on Iraq. I have come here to the ninth anniversary of the Iraq war invasion, Iraq invasion, to condemn it and I uh, would say that all forces completely be withdrawn. Really, they have not been uh, doing that, so for that, and there are some other issues too. Stop the war! Stop the war! Stop the war! The war that our president tells us is over, even though his Pentagon just a few weeks ago asked for three billion more dollars for this supposedly ended war. And our president has not only continued that war in different form in Iraq, but of course, he's dramatically escalated the war in Afghanistan. Each year, last year was the, the year of the greatest number of civilian casualties in the now 10 year plus war in Afghanistan. The war, which is the longest war in United States history. And of course, our particular focus in bringing the demonstration here to the Devon Avenue neighborhood is of course, the continuing attacks on the people of Pakistan, the drone attacks, which during each year of President Obama's administration have not only increased in number, but have increased dramatically in casualties. Stop the war! Stop the war! We're here to say the wars are not ending, they're being continued by other means, and they have to end now. The events last week in Afghanistan were just, were not some rogue soldier that is the face of occupying armies. In particular, World Can't Wait is also here with a big banner saying no war on Iran. We just heard today that um, Iran is being excluded from the International Wire Transfer Service, which is going to strangle not the government, not the military, but the people of Iran. This is, this is going to make the sanctions against Iraq, which were horrific, pale in comparison. So it's, we're really happy to see people out here today in the South Asian community expressing our solidarity and our determination to end these wars. Stop the war! Stop the war! Stop the war! Stop the war! One of us is not here today, and every time we debate at home before coming to an event like this about whether we should come out, we need to remember the person that's for as long as, as we can foresee in Leavenworth, Kansas, in a cell. Bradley Manning would be here with us. He's accused of informing WikiLeaks of all the variety of things that our government does in our name. He's possibly one of the greatest people who served this country. He served this country as a private first class, and he served this country by bringing information to the people and making this government by the people, trying to inform the people to make good decisions and be informed about what their government is doing in their name. Stop killing innocent people. Stop Obama drones on while the Bill of Rights burns. That's the problem. The justification for increasing war in Afghanistan, in Iran, in Yemen, in Somalia, you name it, Uganda, Australia, it's always the claim that we are engaged in an unending war, the so-called war against terror, whether the official language is that or not, an unending war that encompasses the whole world. Drawing from that premise, our civil liberties come in second. And this government, a continuum, as Andy suggested, from 
from Bush through Obama has jettisoned fundamental rights of assembly, due process, and so on. We're coming up against this in the plans for the protest against NATO on May 20th and on the days around that in Chicago with permit issues and other issues threatening our right to legitimate assembly. Uh, at the extreme of this, we have had the appearance of the Attorney General in Chicago at Northwestern Law School just a few days ago claiming that the President of the United States has the right to authorize the execution without trial of American citizens anywhere in the world. That's about as far as it goes. That goes beyond torture. People were worked up about the torture issue under Bush. Now we have presidential kill orders openly, quote, justified by the claim that the constitutional guarantee of due process doesn't mean, as our Attorney General said, judicial due process. You can have your due process in the secrecy of CIA meetings on drone attacks on 16-year-old boys in Yemen, and that's your damn due process, and be satisfied with it because we're defending you in the war on terror. We have, as Andy alluded to, the National Defense Authorization Act, which a lot of people are working to expose, scandalously passed by Congress, uh, codifying the Bushian claims first visited on Jose Padilla right here in Chicago, that anybody anywhere, U.S. citizen or not, can be declared an enemy combatant, swept off into military tribunals, indefinite confinement, no defense, no process, no representation. This is part of what we're fighting for. The struggle against these wars is exactly part and parcel of the struggle for civil liberties. Stop the war! Stop the war! Two hundred fifty children a day die due to malnutrition in Afghanistan. If this is the kind of aid that the United States give, no wonder the people of Afghanistan, the peoples of the world, don't want it. So, Mr. Khan, Mr. Mumtaz Khan, I am a, a U.S. citizen, not quite. I'm a naturalized citizen. A cloud of deportation hangs over my head all the time. And since I'm a Pakistani Muslim, I'm supposedly a terrorist threat. So, so the U.S. government can arrest me for reason or no reason, invisible reason or whatever they think, they can uh, have me arrested. My friends, this is not the country I migrated to 33 years ago. Why does the United States have to go around the world and attack all the different people, different countries, starting from Vietnam to Libya to Grenada to Iraq to Afghanistan? Just for nothing. Actually, now they are planning to attack Iran. Scores, scores of people in Afghanistan have been killed in the night raids. Those people who are living in the mountains have no idea why the United States is attacking them. A Chicago Tribune reporter recently managed to talk to one of the villagers and asked him if they knew what 9-11 was. The poor villager had no idea what 9-11 was and why United States was attacking them. This is their, uh, in Afghanistan, there's a culture of intruders and they want to defend the intruders. So when United States Marines or the police or whoever goes over there, they think they are there to attack them. So they try to protect themselves with the small arms, only to find out that they've been killed by this mighty, strongest army in the world. And then the other aspect of this thing is, then in Pakistan, the United the Pakistan Army is united with the United States Army, and the worst thing is the Pakistani Army is killing their own people. That's all I can say this afternoon. We all know that 
what the Syrian government and what the Iranian government are doing to their people is wrong. We all know that. We all agree. But those people have a right to self-determination and a right to determine what's going to happen for themselves without interference from the U.S. government. Interference only means dom domination. It doesn't mean liberation for those people. Another thing about these threats against Iran, whether they're coming from the U.S. or from Israel, it's not sim a simple matter of just going in and taking over. When Obama and Clinton said all options are on the table, that meant nuclear weapons, which would be totally devastating, not just to the people of Iran, but to the countries around them. Can the people of this world really afford another war, another ongoing of a, this so-called war on terror? No, we cannot. We have to stand up against these threats against Syria and Iran. We have to say no war on Iran, no war on Syria. The world can't wait. Stop killing the innocent people. Stop killing the innocent people. I want you to know that the Midwest anti-war mobilization has initiated opposition, building up opposition to the U.S. war on Iran and Syria, and building an emergency response in case the U.S. or its proxies, such as Israel, actually militarily attack Iran or Syria. This is a culmination of a whole series of the U.S. building up its empire illegally and unjustly. There's a basic law that one country has no right to invade or attack another country unless it's been attacked first. The government of Afghanistan did not attack the U.S. It did not threaten the U.S. Nevertheless, the U.S. went in even though the government of Afghanistan said if the U.S. thinks that bin Laden did it they would, and presented evidence, they would turn bin Laden over to an international tribunal. The U.S. refused and instead went in to bomb Afghanistan with all kinds of weaponry, including depleted uranium weaponry, and has been doing that for 10 years. And it's the U.S. then went into Iraq and Libya and is now threatening Iran and Syria. We need to oppose all this, including the threats of attack on Pakistan and the drone attacks on Pakistan, killing many, many innocent civilians. That's the reason for the rally today, and let's keep it up and build up our opposition. Thank you. Stop drone attacks on Pakistan! Stop killing the innocent people!